walk on. Thanks for stopping by. Alright, first things first. Kinda want to take the time out to apologize for my kind of screwy upload schedule as of lately. Have some IRL things dealing with. Kinda take up a little bit of my time. But bear with me a bit. The videos are here and the videos will be coming. Alright, today we're going to be looking at the exotic kiosk in the tower. Because I've been getting a lot of questions as of late in relation to persons wanting to know what is the best weapons to get. So what I'll be doing is that I'll be going through the weapons for year by year, ranking them in relation to you know worst to best. So it will hopefully give you an idea of the weapon to purchase if you're interested in a weapon for that year. Alright, so we're gonna jump straight in at the year one exotics from the Red War, starting with Ah boy, Dagonia. Ah yes, the good old good old Legend of Acreus starting us off at number nine. This is a shotgun from year one, back when Destiny was having itself an identity crisis and shotguns were heavy weapons for some strange reason. Alright, so some of the selling points of this weapon is that it has phenomenal range, but sadly that's about it. It has a catalyst, but the catalyst doesn't do nothing at all for the weapon. Sure, more ammo, who cares? The weapon is not good. It's perks, long march that you detect enemies at a far distance from your radar. So what? Um, Shot blast. Shot blast is good because it the, the, the rounds from this weapon over penetrate so you can literally get multiple enemies with a single shot but yeah none of that really gonna make this weapon good yo i'm not even gonna pretend that this is a good gun and the fact that it costs spoils because believe it or not it is a raid weapon you would have to be a very very mad blood clot man for waste 240 spoils on this when there are so many better raid weapons in the game where you can buy probably if you have all of them and you just have the spoils lying around you can get this up at number eight we have the exotic sword world line zero it's nothing to write home about in terms of damage but it's exotic per tesseract makes this a very fun weapon to use it states that heavy attacks while sprinting with full energy launches a heavy blink attack nah, like, it looks sick it looks really really sick i love the animation and if you have the catalyst it cuts the activation time so you can perform it more often and you can get some very sick looking kills in a crucible with it but otherwise from that little bit of novelty it can compare to things like lament or falling guillotine or any other other exotic swords and before you ask, yes, you can activate it in the air. Up next at number 7, we have the Maida Multi-Tool. This thing was a beast back in year 1. Uh, it's more of a PvP-related weapon. It's kind of evident by its perks, one of which increases your movement speed, and the second one makes it that your radar is always active. It's also one of two weapons that were introduced in year one that gained additional benefits when paired with its legendary counterpart. Honestly, I saw where Bungie was going with this, but having to sacrifice a weapon slot just to bring out the full potential of an exotic was kind of stupid. Alright, maybe stupid was not strong enough a word. A better choice of words would be saying that it was fuckery. Alright, with that being said, using this weapon in PvE kind of serves no purpose. It does not give you any benefits, takes way too much shots to kill and it's not like scout rifles that we have nowadays where you have things like dragonfly, firefly, adrenaline junkie, all those perks that provide a benefit after killing an enemy you don't get any of that from my in crucible however this is a whole different story this is a nice gun to use in crucible the only issue i have is that the minor radar perk kind of promotes i won't say campy but overly cautious gameplay 
but this perk can save your life when you end up in sticky situations where you're being flanked Don't by be enemies. Captain. And the catalyst for this weapon was recently changed from Outlaw to No Distraction, which works very well with this weapon. At number 6 we have the King itself, the Rat King sidearm. This is a very good gun both in PvP and PvE. I had more fun in PvP though because of its exotic perk Vermin which says that reloading after a kill grants you invisibility and the perk Rat Pack is nothing to scoff at. The more fire team members you have using this weapon is the stronger this weapon is. Its catalyst improves aim assist, recoil direction and also triggering vermin refreshes your health. Coming in at number 5 we have the king of the 120s, the Sturm. I've been too tapped in the crucible with this weapon so much it should be a crime. Taking a look at this weapon's exotic perks we see accomplice which says that kills with this weapon reload your equipped energy weapon and there's also storm and stress which says that kills with drang reloads this weapon overflows the magazine and also grants a bonus damage round which is what gives storm the ability to tutor Double down. so as you can probably tell storm is the second weapon that needed to be paired with its legendary counterpart in order to bring out its full potential and to be honest without Drang Sturm is kind of a mediocre weapon. Its exotic catalyst is going to grant you a plus 18 in range and 36 in handling. I wonder though, with the changes coming to hand cannons, only thing Sturm still going to be able to do to the head and dead? Just take a minute or so, leave a comment so me know what you think. And coming in at number 4 we have the Whisper of the Worm which back in the day was the OG weapon when it came to damage because of its intrinsic perk White Nail which granted it higher base precision damage and also landing 3 precision hits would refill the magazine from thin air. Boy, the people in my bungee decided that this was too OP so they nerfed it where instead of Filling the magazine from nowhere, it would take the ammo from your reserve. This was a hard nerf, but it did not, you know, break the usability of the weapon. And then they added the catalyst, which gave it whispered breathing, which is basically box breathing. You aim the weapon to a short period of time, it do more damage. Alright, so it was all fine and well back in the day, but now, you know, the current sandbox, what was there? It don't really serve that much of a purpose. I mean, we have sniper rifles who are rolled with like Vorpal weapon, triple tap, reconstruction, all of that. And them kind of take the place of Whisper. Because when I was using Whisper, I found that I spent most of my time trying to line up the shot to ensure that I prop the perk than taking the actual shot. So, this Whisper. It's a good gun, still does a good amount of da um, damage, especially if the boss has a very big crit. But there are better weapons available right now, which is why I could not rank it as high as I intended, and I don't think that was a bad call. Alright, so we're up on the last stretch now. We're coming down to the final three weapons. We're almost done. Remember, this is how I rank the weapons, you might rank them differently. Holding down the number 3 spot, we have the Polaris Lance and honestly I had no idea this weapon was this good until I started using it for this video. Polaris Lance has a very interesting perk where every time you get a precision hit it basically gives you back one round and then if you land 4 precision hit it loads one delay high explosive solar round where anything that is hit with it it explodes dealing additional damage and if I kill somebody with it, yes, it will generate a war mine cell. And then the catalyst gate Dragonfly and honestly, Dragonfly combined with Perfect Fifth, the synergy between the two of them, me never really expect it for so good. And for some strange reason, in a crucible, this weapon has ungodly bullet magnetism. I've literally shot persons around corners with this weapon. Also a great anti-sniper weapon, but 
even outside of crucible in pve it is a very good weapon it's also one of the only weapons that you can actually shoot forever as long as you're hitting those crits you will continuously get that round back not only that landing four crits grants you the high damage precision round so yeah decent damage fun to use definitely deserving of the number three spot but now let's jump to number two on the list we have the sleeper simulant there's currently a bug where this weapon is not dealing its intended damage but when that is resolved this is probably going to be the highest damaging linear fusion rifle in the game if it isn't already this has been a good weapon from og destiny um before the recent buffs to linear fusion rifles though this has not seen a lot of play but there has been a spike in persons using it as of recent because linear fusion rifles got a, a blanket buff across the board it's exotic perk what the fuck um i'm probably going to butcher this Donation. yes that was totally me anyway it is because of doing research for this video that i finally learned that sleepers exotic perk is actually just translated to sleeping beauty and it states that the weapon over penetrates enemies and that the lasers will reflect off of hard surfaces and if i'm remembering correctly i think the lasers do more damage once they reflect off of a surface uh something to note though this weapon can and will kill you if the lasers reflect and reflect back towards you its exotic catalyst grants it accelerated coils so faster charge time and i think it decreases the impact damage it gives you also deeper pockets which was a problem that i had with this weapon without the the catalyst it just did not have enough ammo uh deeper pocket kind of fixes that it could have been better but you know a little goes a long way in pvp this it's a it's a high skilled weapon uh it used to have like crazy aim assist where you did not even have to remotely be aiming at an enemy to kill them but now it takes a bit of you know aiming but you are able to reflect the lasers off surfaces and kill multiple guardians but where this really shines is in pve as i stated before this weapon does a insane amount of damage right now and the damage is not even where it's supposed to be so this is deserving of its number two spot and it can only get better thanks for sticking around this has been kind of a lengthy video but we're finally at the number one spot and the number one weapon for the red war is the outbreak perfected and this is in my opinion the best and also the first exotic to buy if you're going to be starting with the exotics from the red war the outbreak perfected is so versatile that it can be used effectively in pvp and also pve content including in content such as raids grandmasters dungeons wherever you take this weapon it performs so awesomely it's not even funny all right so the intrinsic perk basically i tell you say on rapid hits or precision kills you have to generate siva nanites not only that parasitism states that the damage of the weapon go up the more siva nanite attached to an enemy so imagine being in a fire team of six persons using outbreak perfected the damage are going to ramp up so fast you're not even going to know what happened and keep in mind this is a primary weapon so you know say ammo basically just dash away all over the place but to sweeten the deal even more the catalyst gate disease vector which increase the amount of damage the nanite them do and then when something dead with nanites on it then make even more nanites all right so that's it i drop a quick look at text graph you can pause the video and see the order in which you can buy the weapons uh thanks for stay sticking around don't forget to like 
favorite share the video with a friend see you next time hunters like you blaze a path for the rest of us